Good morning, my beautiful, beautiful people. How are we today? It is a beautiful morning, the sun is shining, the birds are singing, and it is fucking cold. But hey, that's why we're indoor people. So today we have three more miniatures from the character expansion. These three are from the Tomb of Giants core set. We have the Cleric, we have the Pyromancer, and we have the Thief already primed with black, ready to go, ready to paint. And engage jolly cooperation. So first thing I'm going to do, we have white ink in our airbrush, ready to zenithal highlight these three. Same as what we did with the other three character expansion fellas. We're just going to create the light source that we can add some contrast paints to and add details to further down the line. Okay, so now we have our three main characters primed, highlighted, and ready to go. So I think let's begin nice and easy. We'll go with the thief. So this character has a bunch of leather armor, which gives us a good opportunity to use some contrast paints. So to begin, I'm gonna base our leathers. So just get this bit based with the brown. That's the top part done. And now I'm just gonna do these trousers with it as well. I'm spreading out these sort of pops of light brown color. It'd be better rather than grouping them all together. It'll at least add a bit of interest across the body. Right, we'll let that dry for a second. So while that's drying, we'll move on to the next part of the leather, which will be the darker black or gray parts. So I use some of this Basilicanum gray contrast, and I'm gonna use that on the back here underneath the brown and on the torso as well. And I'll just do some to the little boots as well. Cause it looked like they were sort of, you know, knee high boots, but it actually looks like these trousers are rolled up and that's actually skin. And lastly, a little bit of the Basilicanum gray contrast to the face mask, bringing back those 2020 visions again. No, God, please, no. Cool, so there's our main basing at the moment. There's our little leathers. So he's wearing mainly chain mail. So I think if we use some metallics on that, that'll probably be the easiest bet for this fella. So I'm just gonna dry brush on some lead belcher to the metallic parts. Dry brushing on thin layers of this metallic will react to the zenithal highlight and it should keep our shading nice and consistent between the highlights and shadows. Okay, chain mail based with lead belcher. I'm gonna do the same for the weapon and the shield. Okay, leathers based, metallics based. I'm just gonna base the skin now. So I'm gonna base it with a thin layer of the Night Quest of Flesh, just to act as our first sort of base undercoat. So we've got his little arm, we've got the little leggies here. There's our beautiful skin based with the Quest of Flesh. And that's our sort of like darkest skin tone. And we're gonna start adding in some brighter tones to it to sort of make it stand out a tad. And the next color to do that will be the Cadian flesh tone. And this is gonna be the sort of main skin tone I'll be using. So I'm just gonna use this to start working in the mid tones, still keeping places like the shadows, mainly consisting the Night Quest of Flesh that we did earlier. So building it up on like the bridge of the nose, the eyebrows, keeping the sort of sunken eyes darker and the sort of sides of the face darker. Same with the arms, the sort of higher they are facing towards the top, I'll use brighter colors until they sort of reach the chain mail because that's where I want to leave the shadows. Beautiful. Here we are with our mid-tones applied. What I'm gonna do now is move up to our final color which will be the kids left flesh and I'll be using this to act as our fleshy highlight and kind of the same method as what I did with the Cadian flesh tone. I'm just gonna use this to just accentuate highlighted areas on the skin. So again, across the eyebrows, just beefing up those areas we did with the Cadian flesh tone, but not completely overwriting it. Cool. So we have three tones applied. What I need to do now is go back over them with the three colors sort of toned down to a glaze wash consistency 
just so I can start blending them together a bit and get these transitions between colors smoothed out a bit. So just testing the consistency on my thumbnail. And once it's translucent enough, I can start blending these tones together a bit. And with a few applications, you'll start to see the blending becoming a lot smoother. Beautiful. And there's our happy little handsome chap. So I'm gonna take some of this Nuln Oil Gloss Wash. I'm gonna go over the metal that we've done, all the metallics. So dropping some of this gloss onto the chain mail. Just let it seep into all the little cracks and crevices. Onto the shield and onto the weapon as well. Cool, and we'll let that dry for a second. And whilst the Nuln Oil is drying, I'm going to use some brown acrylics to jazz up our leather. So I'm gonna use some Mornfang Brown and some Balor Brown. So with some thinned down, I'm gonna kind of just pick out the sort of mid-tone highlights with it, just to sort of beef up these colors, just to sort of add more tone to this snake bite leather. It is a terrific contrast, but you need more than one tone most of the time. Not everything is one color. Cool, with the Mornfang Brown applied, I'm now gonna move up into the lighter tone, which will be the Balor Brown, and I'll just use that to accentuate more highlights. So just a nice thin layer again. Cool. There's our lovely armor. With our highlights, midtones, and shadows. So with our leather highlighted, I'm gonna do the same again, and I'm gonna do it with a Ministratum Gray, and I'm gonna use that to highlight the black leather parts. Same as before, and we're just picking out the highlighted areas closest to the sort of light source above, and just working in this brighter gray. So there we are with our highlighted greys. Next thing we're gonna do, we're nearly there, is I'm gonna grab some, grab some Necron compound dry paint, and I'm gonna use this just to jazz up our metallics. Just speckle on some highlights. Beautiful. And the last thing to finish this little fella off, take some Abaddon Black, take it down to a wash. Real thin wash glaze consistency. We're gonna use that to beef up some contrast, darken some shadows back in a bit. Very cool. So there we are. There is our thief with the black wash applied all over and with him. We can call that a day on the first of three. And we'll pull out our next fella. Second up, we have the Cleric. Every party needs one of these fellas. Good healers, good faith. The sort of cloak is a nice vibrant kind of blue color. So I think I'm gonna use some contrast on that. So I'm gonna use some Talisar Blue contrast paint. And I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna start basing the main cloak color. Beautiful, beautiful blue cloak. So now the little pouch on the back, I'm gonna base that with some leather. So more contrast paint, I'm gonna use some snake bite leather. Not doing the sort of like ropes around it, but just doing the main bulk in the middle. Cool, it's looking pretty cool already. Now those slightly lighter wraps, I'm gonna use some skeleton horde contrast because it's a bit brighter, a bit lighter and beigier than the snake bite leather. So these little bits here, just gonna get them based with it. So that's the main body with three contrast paints applied. Pretty simple, pretty easy, pretty cool. So I'm going to use a bit more of that skeleton horde contrast and I'm gonna do it on the wraps on her arm. And the boots, I'm just gonna do them with some snake bite leather again, since they're leather boots. I'm gonna make the shield a bit of a darker blue, so I'm gonna use some of the Leviathan Blue contrast paint. So just this wooden shield bit here, get it based with some Leviathan Blue. You can always use Talisar Blue, the same as the cloak to make it match, but I'm gonna make it different. There we are. Next up, I'm gonna do some hair. I'm gonna base it with some Griffound Orange, so it's a sort of gingery redhead kind of color. We're pretty much there with just the general basing applications. Next up, gonna base the face, base the face. 
Same as what we did with the thief. Face this face with some Night Quest of Flesh. So what's left is the shield details and the mace. So shield details, I'm gonna base it with some Corax white. So we've sort of got this nice white and blue kind of wooden shield. And lastly, I'm gonna base the mace. So some lead dulcher. Cool. So there's our thing with all of its first base coats on. Looking pretty fancy already. Because the cloak's the main part, I'm gonna start working on that with some highlighting and shading. So two colors here, Lothan Blue and Thousand Suns Blue. I'm gonna use Lothan Blue as our main highlight. I'm just gonna map out areas where I want the brightest points to be. Basically just following the guide underneath of the Zenithal highlight that we've done. Highlights with the Lothan Blue. I'm gonna map out some more sort of mid-tones with the Thousand Suns Blue, just a nice thin layer. Just sort of blend between these colors a bit. There we go. And with a bit of Thousand Suns Blue again, sticking in this blue tone, I'm just gonna add some highlights to the shield. And I'm just gonna move up into the Lothan Blue and do the same again. So there's our shield. Now for the leather on the back, I'm going to use some midtones of Mournfang Brown. And I'll do the same thing to the boots as well. Then I'm going to highlight it with some Balor Brown. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the lighter wraps, but for them, I'm going to be using a layer of Zandri dust. These sort of ropes on the center of the body as well, the little strings. I'm going to base them with some Zandri dust as well. So here we are. We've got some highlights going on over the body now. I'm going to do the same for the hair and the skin. So for the hair, I'm going to use some rat skin flesh to do some highlighting because it's quite a nice sort of like orangey kind of tone, but not too bright orange. And I'm going to add some sort of darker tones in with a bit of Mournfang Brown. There's our hair. And with the face, I'm going to use the sort of main mid-tone of Cadian Flesh Tone and boost up these brighter areas. So the brow, forehead, the nose, the chin, and the cheekbones. And same again, moving into the Kisla Flesh which will be our brighter highlight tone and boost up those same kind of areas, just a bit more concentrated. Okay, there's our cleric with the face. Next up, gonna add some administratum gray to the whites on the shield, just to start taking down that bright, pure white color a tad. And the mace, I'm gonna do what we did before, grab some necron compound, highlight these top parts. Now we're going back to our Abaddon Black, doing a black wash, and we're gonna beef up our shadows. Cool, and there's our black washed cleric. A bit more contrast and shadowing going on there. Much better. Right, two down, one to go. And the last one to do, the pyromancer. So on this pyromancer, we're gonna base it in the same fashion that we've based the other two with some contrast paint. So the ax handle and the shield are wood. I'm gonna base them a bit darker this time, some Garagax sewer. Let's move on and we'll go to the snake bite leather because we'll start basing some of the clothes. Let's do the boots and let's do the sort of leathery outfit on the torso and the cloak hanging down at the back. I'll do with some snake bite leather too. Cool, very nice. I think that's a good division of color, I suppose. And the wraps on the arms, back to our skeleton horde contrast. Cool, the fur, I'm gonna base with the apothecary white contrast paint. Trousers I'm gonna base with some basilicanum gray contrast. 
That's how our fiery pyromancer is looking so far. Pretty good for a couple of quick applications at the moment. Edge of the shield, I'll do with some lead belt sure. And the center of the shield as well. Axe head as well. For this sort of like pendants on the torso, I'm gonna to base with some Rune Lord brass. The hair, I'm gonna do a bit darker than the others, so I'm gonna use some rattling grime. Just kind of making up as I go along, you know? I'm just sort of trying out different things, seeing how they're looking, not sticking to any kind of rules or anything. Just figuring it out as we go. Give the face a base of the Night Quest of Flesh. And now the final little bit that we haven't done is the head strap. I'm going to detail it in with some Zandri dust. Right, that's the whole thing. Whole pyromancer based with the first coat of everything. Let's continue with this Zandri dust and use it to add some highlights to the skeleton horde wraps. Mornfang brown, same things as before. I'm just gonna use this to add some mid-tones to the leather. Now the sort of pendants, metal parts, metal rings, whatever you wanna call them, have these kind of gemstones, I think, like little jewels in the middle. So it might be quite nice if we go over it with some Mephiston red, just detailing tiny little red dots in the center of each one. I'm gonna highlight the trousers with some administratum gray. Now let's highlight the fur with some Corax white going from the top down. With the skin tone, same as before, moving up into the Cajun flesh tone. And we're gonna start highlighting the same areas, nose, cheeks, forehead, and chin. Then moving up to the kids' left flesh, just enhance those highlights a bit more. Right, highlights around the model done. I'm gonna move on to the black wash now and start giving us some more shadows again. Right, with our Black washing complete, we've got some more shadows going on. So what I'm gonna to do to jazz this sucker up, my favorite little coagulated blood. We're gonna have some blood on the ax, sort of like as if it was dripping down on the face as well. But before we do that, some flesh hair is red contrast. From above, I'm gonna kind of flick down and create some blood splatter onto the shield as well. Got this nice little blood soaked pyromancer now. So now I'm just gonna use the coagulated blood and just start building up some dense blood pooling around. That's a pretty blood soaked looking pyromancer right there. Pretty cool. I do very much like that effect quite a lot. Maybe one day I'll stop using it. Maybe not. But that about does it. Pyromancer done, thief done. Cleric, done. And the most exciting thing, which is exciting for all of us, including you, is that that means I now have a fully painted, fully complete, entire Dark Souls board game with all the expansions fully painted. It's the last one. Really? Completes the full set? I'm not sure if I'm proud or embarrassed. So these three complete the video, but they also complete all of my Dark Souls board game expansions. What a miraculous day. There's those three. Let's get our other three in. There we go, there is all six. Character expansion, painted, done. And that about does it for this episode. And I guess that means we'll have to do another full collection video of the entire board game. But that does it from me. Peace out. Well, would you believe it? That is the entire board game collection from Dark Souls completed, fully painted. And that means I'm going to have to do another collection video with all the models out on the desk. So stay tuned for that and I'll walk you through every single fully painted model from this awesome collection. But until then, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's episode, hit the like button, leave me a comment, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, peace out gang, and don't you dare go hollow.